making us North America's fastest growing auto brand in 2016. Take on 2017 and get the safety you'd expect. The fuel efficiency you need and America's best truck warranty. Get to Nissan's Take On 2017 event for 0% financing for up to 72 months on 11 models or save up to 10000 on select models. Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics. I am in the home of uh, Melissa, and uh, you've been a bit of a rabble rouser, I'd say, uh, here in Flint, rightly so. Uh, you're a mother, and uh, you, like many people, have been affected by the lead crisis, and uh, I think what's really striking to me is just the complete and utter um, uh, arrogance of this governor and sheer just disregard for people's human rights and humanity, uh, people that aren't, I guess, in his wealth sphere, shall we say. But uh, I want to start from the beginning. So you first learned about uh, the high levels of lead uh, in your uh, home and, uh, you know, exposure when? Um, April of 2015. We had already been notified um, in January of 2015 that there were high levels of total trihalomethanes, which are cancer-causing byproducts. They weren't treating the water properly. And um, we found that out in January, so we started digging. And then we talked to Aaron Brockovich and Bob Bocock, who said, you'd better test for lead and copper because people had brown water. And brown water means iron corrosion. So if there's corrosive water for whatever means, you need to check the other metal too. So we started testing and in February of 2015 found lead in the water for the first time. We got our results back for our home in April of 2015. And how high were the uh, lead levels? Ours weren't very high. We have a copper service line. It was eight parts per billion, but I ran and got um, all of our blood tested and it showed long-term exposure. We had lead present in our blood, but not at high levels. But unfortunately, um, we had already stopped drinking the water and been on bottled water for cooking and drinking for over four months. And so we have no idea how high our lead levels were when we were drinking them when they're their highest because after 28 days lead leaves your blood and goes into your bones your brain your soft tissue organs and wherever it wants to go so let's talk about that uh your kids uh 12 13 uh are having bone issues because of the lead levels yes um they have their growth plates which should be soft and spongy from ages 9 to 14 so they can grow with their bones started um, hardening prematurely so they've got severs disease in their feet and they are having hardened growth plates all the way up to the backs of their necks so as their bones hit their over the summer four inch growth spurt their joints and their muscles did not so they started arching over and having a really hard time moving they can't sleep at night because they're in so much pain and what can you give a kid and they're, they're 12 and 13 so they had to go through very very painful physical therapy and lead stored in your growth plate so that's the only thing that the doctor doctor could think of that would connect the two. My oldest is 18, so he missed that window, but now he's having problems with his pancreas. So we're not sure what the reason of that is. He had a growth on his tongue that was removed, and it was benign, thank goodness. But, um, but yeah, we have other issues, too. I have... Um, uh, seizure disorder now. I don't have epilepsy and I don't have MS, but I have signal abnormalities in my brain. They found it through my MRI and my neurologist thinks it's from copper and lead being stored in my brain. So When did you start showing signs and symptoms of this? I started having seizures July of 2015. And uh, clearly Governor Snyder and the state of Michigan have been paying all your medical bills, right? <laughs> no, no payment for missed work, no payment for driving an hour to my specialist, no payment for the kids, the co-pays, the medicines, um, the over-the-counter, the environmental physicians. There's, those, those are the people that can help you when you're exposed to poisons. Um, we don't really have them here, and they aren't covered by insurance. So if you've got a couple hundred dollars, um, you could go see one like we had to. But um, other than that, no, we've received no help from Governor Snyder. And when we tell our personal stories and we put them out there, he just completely disregards that we even exist. And uh, I don't know if this is talked about a lot. I, I haven't heard much, but I mean, for kids, the mental health component. I mean, this is not easy. You know, when you're 12 or 13, you're supposed to just be playing ball, playing Xbox, whatever. And uh, meanwhile, your kids are just an example. They're hunched over. They can't sleep. My boys are old enough to understand what was done to them, but they still don't understand how this can happen. Um, we're supposed to be protected by the government. They they still have that innocence, but not. They're, they're they're still old enough. They're still young enough to think the government represents them. Absolutely, because you know that was one of the things we'd never talked about. I I didn't. I had to get over my shock. Uh, you know, I'm just a regular person, music promoter. I never thought that the government would poison us on purpose and continue to allow it to happen for we're coming on three years now. And um, so the boys went from just hanging out playing 
going and having fun all the time to being in pain, being tired all the time, being sick all the time. My, my, all three of my kids have a reduced white blood cell count. So their immune system, it took a huge hit. And so now they make protest signs and they go stand out and they speak out, which part of me is like, yes, my kids are involved. But the other part of me is like their childhood got taken from them. This is, this is not fair. This is wrong. So I've been talking to everybody uh, that I interview because, you know, unfortunately the country, I think because of the media, some other things doesn't view this as a crisis anymore. And Schneider has spent so much money on his legal defense and beautiful brochures saying everything's wonderful in Flint that I think he's been successful in taking away that crisis um, uh, label. But from what I could tell, like any lead <laughs> in water in the faucets in the sink whatever it is uh if you're a good parent you know, just a thoughtful person uh it seems kind of arbitrary to me in the first place what what's 15 uh parts per billion whatever is the allowable limit i mean who knows every person is different any doctor will say every person is affected differently so one person could have six parts per billion another one could have a hundred um but it seems it would be a crisis if to this day nobody knows what's coming out of their sink, what's coming out of their faucets, what's coming in the bathtub. And you are accurate. Now, my latest lead test came back 1,740 parts per billion, and that was in November. Um, in September, it was 160 parts per billion. So I just want to be clear. This is not the state providing lead tests for your home, correct? Uh, the 160 um, was. That was the state. We went and picked up the kit ourselves and did our test. Um, and then uh, the Virginia Tech test was um, 1,740. Before that, in April, we tested with water defense, and it had already been up to 150 parts per billion. Again, it's not our lead. It's coming in from the city's distribution system. We don't have a lead service line that we can see. It's copper coming in. Our home is older, so hopefully we, you know, beat that um, that line. But it doesn't matter. The water's not getting better. And another thing is they're only talking about lead because lead is manageable in their eyes. Um, and it's negligible. You can protect yourselves by drinking bottled water, which they're wanting to take away from us. And then they give us these filters that, um, that reduce, not remove. That's the key thing. They do not remove 100% of lead. None of them do. In fact, they grow bacteria. Wayne State proved this. So now we're dealing with the bacterial issues that have been there since the beginning. We said we had E. coli breakouts in summer of 2014. So the bacteria problem's been there. But lead basically sucked the air out of the room. And everyone wants to talk about lead, 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 which is horrible. It's going to damage your kids. It's going to damage you as an adult and senior citizens that nobody else wants to talk about. But the bacteria is what will and has already killed people. And that's one thing they will not talk about. They will actually say there's not bacteria in the water. And you know why they can say that? because they haven't bothered to test for it. So, EPA, supposedly the safeguard, and you know, even though the, the incoming person's a lunatic, but um, the, the EPA was here. There was no disaster uh, declared, which is another story, but uh, what's the EPA's role in this? Is it just, you know, Governor Snyder, his, his minions just say, oh, everything's good, and the EPA says, okay, thanks, you know, thanks for following up. Where's the federal response? Because we know that all this money was passed recently. Uh, I don't see any of that money coming anytime soon. But has the EPA pretty much been lights out here? The EPA has to rely on what the state is doing. Because there was no disaster declared here, the state has been in charge. So the very people that poisoned us and lied to us this entire time and continues to lie and misrepresent test results and give people a false sense of security is in charge of our recovery, which is insane. It's like going to an abusive husband and saying, hey, I know you broke my nose, but can you please fix the nose you broke? Um, it's not your fault. I'm sorry. You know, it's my fault because I'm the victim. But that's what how, how little sense this makes. The very people that did this to us are in charge of fixing it. So why can why do they expect us to believe what they're saying anyhow? It's it's insane. But also there's an inherent conflict of interest because if Governor Schneider is very thorough and, you know, disperses uh, the appropriate authorities to check for bacteria and all these things, his culpability is exposed further. And the legal ramifications only get worse. Well, and the first thing, that would be him admitting that there's a problem. He refuses to do that. One thing he will do is say, I'm sorry, and I will fix it. That fixing basically is more covering up hiring of two PR firms to spin this, multiple legal firms, even though he says he's not worried about being charged. But You guys are paying. 4.5 million of our tax dollars. We actually went to the admin board and said, 
I, as a taxpayer and an affected Flint resident, do not approve of this. I don't want my tax dollars to defend him against what he is still doing to my family. And they passed it anyways because he's allowed to write these little checks to himself. It's an amazing dictatorship. I mean, seriously. So if, if we're, we're seeing all of these other states that are taking away democracy to fix this and this and this. But that is effectively what he's done. He's taken away all of our voices, especially in a poor minority city. He's stripped every say that we have, stripped the power from our local officials, taken over ran it as a dictator and then when a problem happened he's like oh I don't know somebody in my office didn't tell me we went to his office twice and he knew there was no not knowing and not to mention the protests and everything but we brought him documents water tests maps that we had made and um he didn't, uh, apparently he didn't get the memo from his chief of staff and Harvey Hollins, who was sent in to directly report to him. So there's a lot of people in this loop, and there's a lot of lies. And it's become, it's a partisan issue, it's a political issue, which is garbage, because it should be a human issue, because people are dying, people are suffering. But at the end of the day, all they talk about is, oh, well, we don't have the money, we don't have the resources. They have the resources to up his um, his legal bills that we pay for, but they he, the state magically doesn't have the resources to deliver water to the homebound. So we we still get stuck doing it. Um, volunteers who come in still come do it. We have to help people. The, the water distribution sites are only open noon to six, Monday through Saturday. So for people like us who have two jobs or who have work long days, you're just out of luck. So you have to go buy water or hopefully maybe somebody can go pick it up for you. And if you don't have a car, which uh, I think it was like 18 or 19 percent of the residents of Flint don't have vehicle um, or don't have a running vehicle either, you're stuck. If you look, the saddest thing that you'll see is bus stops where you see cases of water sitting there where somebody was carrying those multiple cases of water that are 26 and a half pounds a piece that couldn't do it anymore, couldn't get it up the bus steps, and they had to leave it there. And after making that trek through all the stops and the transfers just to go get clean water, and they couldn't even bring it back to their home. So the people that are suffering the most are the most vulnerable, and that is what the government's job is just supposed to be, is to protect those people, and they are hurting them. Also something that's not being focused on, just because you get bottled water, Water doesn't mean it's clean water. We were just talking about uh, certain bottled water that come, is tainted in itself. But yeah, I mean, there's one person in the FDA that's over the billions of bottles of water that's you know sold every day. We don't know what's in these bottles. We it's scary because we're like, well, this is our only option. Um, Absopure comes from a spring in Jackson. It's straight spring water. Well, Jackson's got contamination from an Enbridge oil spill that came down the pipe years ago, and it's the Kalamazoo River spill. You got it. And so here we are. Those people are really sick, and yet they're pulling water from them and sending it to us. And I'm like, okay, well, what's going on? There was a woman that actually tested her lead and copper levels, and her copper level went through the roof, and she's been on all bottled water. Well, now she doesn't want to drink bottled water because she's just like, well, you know, high copper can cause seizures and neurological damage and all this other stuff. And she's like, well, what do we have to go through? Um, my kids wouldn't touch the bottled water. So what they did was they ran the bottled water through a zero water pitcher and then would use it. So... How do you explain that to your children? They're, they're terrified of water, and there's no reason that we should trust this. They give you cases, and like, here you go. Where's the testing? I mean, when I go out of town, I won't drink tap water. Oh, I'm sure that some people have, like, the cleanest, best water, but you cannot slide that glass over to me and expect me to trust what's in it just because somebody says it's safe. We did that already, and it's poisoned my kids. It's changed our futures forever. There's no way that we're going to ever trust somebody unless I can see a full lab report. And that's the thing. I want my 55-page lab report. I want to flip, you know, if I don't understand it, I'll ask somebody or I'll Google. They treat us like we're dumb here. Um, like, we don't know how to use the internet. We don't know how to speak to each other. I think that's what they, they the state wants us to do, is stay separated and to stay in the dark. I want to know what all contaminants are in my water so I know how to best protect my family. I need to know what's going through that. But they tell us no, because it's just going to upset people. Oh. It's also not a coincidence, because, you know, there's no other way to say this, but when you go, when you're in uh, predominantly low-income uh, African-American neighborhoods, these are not, uh, you know, scholars at Harvard. Uh, it's not their fault. It just is. It is what it is. So a lot of the uh, African American uh, minority people I speak to, uh, they they don't. There's so many layers of corruption here. There's so many layers to this. There's so many different agencies and boards and you know water sources that it's it's hard for me to keep up with it. And I would you know I'm fairly educated. So I think they were banking on this that you know yeah oh we fucked up. But if we just kind of fly it under the river, fly it under the rug, Obama will come down. He'll do a photo op. He'll drink some water. Uh, Schneider, you know, he'll, he'll drink some water, so a few photo ops with government officials delivering water, and, you know, on to the next. 
That's exactly it. I mean, they expect us to be poor. We're trying to make our ends meet. We have a very busy life. We're raising our families, scraping by, doing everything we can to just to survive because it's not easy here in Flint as it is. So then they dump this on us, and they're just like, oh, it'll just be another thing. But for many of us, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. We're like, no, no, you don't. You know what? You took away our jobs. You raise our property taxes. You our, our water bills are the highest in the United States for the lowest quality water. But now, now you're going to poison us and you're going to say everything's fine. So what they didn't expect was the residents to come together. And that's the thing is through all the media, they talk about the few knights in shining armor, these people that came in and wrote in and saved us all. No, 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 no. This has been a poor minority, broken community that's sick and poisoned that got together, fought together and brought this out into the light. This has been a resident driven movement from the from the, the get-go, when they told us we were crazy, and even when people were talking about their discolored water, oh, you're just crazy, you know, you're a crazy black mother who, you know, just wants money, and you just want something for free, or you're a crazy Latina that just wants a, um, a green card. We've seen it. We've heard this from the public, because we do have a large undocumented community here. The things people say is ridiculous, but I think they do it because they think that it cannot happen to them. Well, guess what? If you drink water, if you're drinking tap water, even if you're drinking well water, guess what? It can, and very well might happen to you. And that's the thing. People need to realize that you're not safe. I don't care how much money you have in the bank. It's not going to protect you from poison water because not even the best, um, uh, filtration systems that are on the market right now can filter out all the contaminants that are in our water right now.